Hold on. We will try to resurrect the animat. What just happened? I Hello. Have, I have no idea. I wasn't even paying attention. The, the, call, the call must have dropped you or something. Skype was being bitchy to you. Like, I'm going to drop animat. Boink. The hell? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I didn't touch anything, I swear. It wasn't you. It was... It's in. No, but anyway. Anyway. Skype is anti Canadian. <laughs> Them bastards. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. We got time to die. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Charlie. Yo, she bitch. Let's go. I'm on Jack Jungle Mask, too. Don't fuck with the babysitter. We came, we saw, we kicked it down. Swing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bueller, you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What are you looking at, Spothead? Fucking Chuck Norris. Great Scott, you know this is heavy. You just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. Cinema Royale. Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale, where we shed the spotlight on movies of which we talk about. I'm your host, Scooter Mike, and along with me are my awesome, esteemed movie colleagues known as Jaime Tude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Ashley Judd is the Super Mother Bug. What did she do to you? <laughs> and 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 let, <laughs> it's a long story. We're not okay. We're not gonna no. Uh, last but not least, Animat. Also known as Mad Bruce. Hello, people. <laughs> We're here to talk movies. Uh, yes, we talk movies a lot. Um, tonight, we are going... This is our 10th episode, by the way. Uh, we hit our first milestone. Mm-hmm. This yay epi- for us. Yay for us. <laughs> <laughs> this episode... <clears throat> this episode, we are going to talk about Mockbusters... And the company have been known for doing mockbusters, the asylum. Boy, <laughs> boy, do we have yes. this is going to be a very heated discussion. I can tell already. For those of you who do not know what a mockbuster is, a mockbuster is a a rip off or a, a movie that piggybacks off a similar movie with the same title and premise, more or less. Um, Mockbusters are like rip-off. But Mockbusters has a win-lose situation. Like, for example, let's say your grandma goes to the store and buys you, goes to buy you a gift. She uh, is trying to buy Transformers, but she picks Mm -hmm. up a copy of Transmorphers instead. That's a lose situation. Well, Grandma, I don't want Transmorphers. I want Transformers, you moron. Or, or, or like, it's like uh, they go into the store and don't know what they're looking for. It's like, uh, Jimmy is looking for Transmorphers. Uh, trans, uh, trans, uh, trans, ah, Transmorphers. That must be it. Oh, I'm sure he'll like this. Exactly. Or how about, or how about my favorite uh, uh, situation, which is uh, going to uh, this actually happened, uh, going to the video store to pick out Babe and going home with Gordy. <laughs> you 
theoretically, that's not a ripoff. Like, yeah, they, they even proved that Gordy came first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's a still. slight of confusion. <laughs> you try to expect same... a cute pig, and then what did you get? Pig power in the house. <laughs> I knew, I knew you're gonna bring that up. <laughs> Hey, it's 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 so song yeah, it's, in the movie. So that that song. I love that. It's just song. your stupidness and awesomeness at the same time. Oh <laughs> man, but uh, but so. yeah, the the same logic applies. If a similar movie comes out, or if it's you know it, if it appears to be close enough, then you know mm. people are gonna pick that up, thinking it is what it is. Yeah, usually. Um, yeah. As I was saying, the uh, win situation of the Mockbusters is uh, people who enjoyed one film might want a movie that's similar in the same genre and might pick up a movie that's uh, like a Mockbuster to enjoy that fulfillment. But I don't know anybody who does that. So, eh. Well, theoretically, the best mock like the best mockbusters would be in the same category as the recent transformers movies or something like that. They're mostly made for like, like the best kind would be made for mindless entertainment. If you're going to buy like something made from the asylum or something like that, and you expect an actual movie, well then you're really going to be disappointed. Yeah. Like it's mostly one of those things that you just want to try to copy like, um, Mystery Science Theater 3000 and just point out the mistakes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like, you you expect something to be, like, so bad it's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well. Well. Well, well, James, what do you want to have to say? Well, I guess it's time to kick off this conversation with the, uh, or one of the first... Um, of the Asylum feature films, which I have seen. All right. By the way, um, H. G. Wells's War of the Worlds. Ah, uh, they're yeah. they're the Asylum's first mockbuster. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. See, so you've done your homework. I've done my homework. Um, mm-hmm. I actually, so, I actually heard about the asylum from um, cinem like uh, Cinemassacre's Monster Madness, like made from the same guy who did the Angry Video Game Nerd. Uh, he like when he talked about like War of the Worlds and like he mentioned the asylum's H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, and I have to say it's like, oh wow, it looks cheap. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, I. Uh... I'm not. I'm not going to say too much about it, um, uh, because I uh, I do have another web show that I'm doing on the subject, and I want to save my opinions for that. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, hit hit nudge nudge. <laughs> wink wink. Which I still need to do a title card for. Um. Actually. Um. No, don't worry about it. I got that taken care of. You found another t title card maker? You found another yes. artist? I'm you sorry, see? Matt. You monster! How can you do this to me? I'm leaving! You can still do the color. You can still do the color. <laughs> What's the point? But anyways, uh, go on. But um, the, uh, I'm just going to say this, all things, all things considered, because I, uh, I had to watch four War of the Worlds movies, and it, uh, I'll give it its, its props, because it, it does have a few strengths to it. Now I'm going to talk about that, I'm going to go about, go in more depth about that later, uh, in my other show, uh. I do have a bone to pick with its sequel, which I've yeah. also seen. Yeah, that's the weird thing. Like now they have, like they have a sequel to a book series. 
It's like if you're gonna be having making a movie sequel, if you're gonna have a sequel to a movie that's based on a book, like you know you're gonna fail. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and uh, this is no nothing to refer to a movie, an animated film that's releasing in uh, September. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm lost. What are you talking about? Okay, you don't get it. Freaking uh, cloudy two. Oh. oh. Yeah. Okay. Even the fans are doubting the film. That's what scares me. But I, I apologize uh, to interfere. Uh, go on uh, about. Uh, I won't interfere anymore. Uh, what, what's with the uh, War of the Worlds two? War of the Worlds two, the next wave. <laughs> the tagline for this is "This time we fight back." No. <laughs> But um, the bone that I have to pick with this film is that uh, is that this is where this is actually where all the intelligence and cleverness goes out the door. This is where they were legitimately trying to make a blockbuster, and I didn't I didn't feel like the first one was a it was a mockbuster, but it wasn't. It wasn't trying to be a blockbuster. Thankfully, because they didn't have the budget for that. Here, they still didn't have the budget, and they were trying to be a blockbuster. Baffling, even more. Uh, some people have actually confused this for a sequel to the Steven Spielberg War of the Worlds. <laughs> God, so even though even though that ha- this uh, has uh, this stars another member of the outsiders I, I, I find that perfectly perfectly baffling you've got uh, you, you've got um, you've got C Thomas Howell in in these movies who was the lead in the movie the outsiders and Tom Cruise and the other War of the Worlds movie, who is also one of the one of the uh, the minor characters in The Outsiders. Wow! Think about that. <laughs> yes, they both one they both ends up in the bigger production. The other ends up in poo poo. Yeah, and the uh, and the the best part of it is uh, you can if you graph the uh, if you graph the two careers of these people. The uh, the popularity of their film and their careers is sort of inversely proportionate to one another. You could so, say, yes. It's uh, there. There's got to be some sort of mathematical uh, theory there. But <laughs> um, but um, War of the Worlds too. They just didn't even try. They were. Freaking, uh, uh, it, they had a, they had a, a, I hate to use this term, a token black character in this movie, uh, who was, (laughs) who was the whitest token black guy I've ever seen. I mean, this is really? like you can you can tell this this is a guy who who is trying his his absolute best to act street, but has never but has never spent a day in a life on the street. Well, does he go out like like, like on the set? It was like, uh, yo, my homeboy, uh, <laughs> what is up, Bo Shizzle? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, it's, uh, he's, and it, it's not, it's not that bad. It's just, you know, he can't even, it, 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 it has to be seen to be believed. <laughs> oh, Jesus. He's like, I'm, 
I've been I've been messed up. I've been I've been separated from my girl, and I've been trying to find her for the past several days. And you know, it it's just so cookie cutter. It is so <laughs> cookie cutter. It is not legit. Yeah. Well, if I could be honest, I think the tagline says it pretty much says says it best for the movie. It's like this time. We're trying to fight back. We're going to be serious about it. And we're going to be all action-packed about it to fight against the aliens. And that's, like, probably the biggest flaw with, like, like a ripoff of a movie. Like, a sequel to a ripoff, you know? Like, with the budget that they have, you cannot make it serious. You cannot make it look action-packed. It's like, not really. It just... It just doesn't work. It's like you have to have a budget of more than a hundred million to do that, or mm-hmm. you need some really, really talented people. Otherwise, you're just gonna make yourself look stupid, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. No, I'll tell you exactly what this this prob this movie's first biggest problem is. Uh, the the way that the the way that every War of the Worlds movie ends is the same way after uh they get destroyed by the aliens are destroyed by uh that microscopic bacteria Mm -hmm. uh they they're not used to the they're not used to the uh the earth's atmosphere they're not born and bred here so they can't it doesn't work with them which is interesting so why in the ever loving shit would you try again? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Gotta be away. Because they have to fight back this time. They want revenge. <laughs> back with a vengeance. We don't want to kill them with the common cold. We want to kill them with our bullets. America, fuck yeah! <laughs> because America, yeah, the asylum is pretty much known for their cheesy cheesiness of crappy low key CGI. Yeah, and there's one thing that I noticed with um, like all the asylum films is that often there is a pattern. It's e- they they would either go. They either go one in three ways. One is that they would do a ripoff, but if it's based on a novel, they will start with um, they they will start with the author author's name, like H. G. Wells, um, War of the Worlds, or or something like that. I I know there's others, but it, it escaped my mind. Another way is the obvious ripoff, the kind that sounds like a parody. But, like, it sounds like a parody that you would put in a kid's show or something like that. But, like, unfortunately, it's not. It's actually a real thing. Like, Transmorphers or The Day the Earth Stopped or their their upcoming uh, Atlantic Rim. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Atlantic Rim job, yes. (laughs) Yeah. Whoa! (laughs) What the? <laughs> surprise, Whoa. surprise, motherfucker. I've never been to that one. <laughs> and the third way is essentially the like the one that's really focused on being like mindless entertainment. And these ones, I'm referring specifically to like films that they made. It's like Mega Shaw. One, it's like Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus, or like Mega Shark versus Crocosaurus, mm-hmm. or like those kinds of films where you just want to see like the like a freaking huge shark battle a giant octopus. Yeah. And with Salem, even though it's done terribly, I'm sure it's like it's just fun, you know? It's oh, just yeah. my, It's just. Unless goofy fun. It is. It, it certainly is, because I've seen Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus, and it is mindless entertainment to a point. I mean, 
when you, when you see the shark and the octopus fight, it's good. It's good action. Um, but the, the surprising thing about Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus is one of the cast members is Debbie Gibson, who most people might know for her singing career back in the eighties. That actually sounds. Mm, I don't. Debbie Gibson actually sounds familiar. I was. She uh, she had some hits like "Only in My Dreams," uh, "Electric Youth," all that stuff, and I was like, "What? What is she doing in this movie?" But uh, um, selling out. But they there was a another movie. They uh, the asylum does mockbusters and they do these creature feature movies as well. They kind of do that because they don't want to do mockbusters all the time. Like, for example, I've seen Two-Headed Shark Attack. Uh, how do you find these movies and why would you waste your time with them? I I think, well, okay, from my point of view is like I want to experience everything. I want to experience the good, bad, and the ugly. I want to experience everything. I mean... First off, two-headed shark attack. It's like two-headed shark. Ah, uh, ding, ding, ding. That's my movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> two-headed shark. Why not? It was actually pretty. I, in my opinion, I thought it was really cool because they oh, not only did CGI, but they actually had a prop two-headed shark they used in the film. There's scenes where you can mm-hmm. see. The uh, actors like fighting against it, punching it. It's like actual physical prop they use, and I was like, "Oh, the asylum's sort of hopping their way to practical." Yes, they but, have props. Uh, Two Headed Shark Attack starred uh, Brooke Hogan, famous daughter of Hulk Hogan. Her acting is a little bit hammy, cheesy. Um, Carmen Electra and uh, Jerry O'Connell's brother Charlie. Poor Carmen. I mean, uh, the seriously. brother of a famous actor. Yeah, a famous brother, a lesser known brother of a famous brother. Yeah, the famous brother of a of a very talented comedian with a with a second rate movie career. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. Um, honestly, I've seen quite a bit of the Asylum films. I've seen, I was counting it last time. I was like, okay, I've seen one, two, three, four, at least five of them at least. Um, funny thing is before this recording, I was actually flipping the channels and, uh, sci-fi, you know, or sci-fi as you call it, uh, they often do these kind of creature feature movies as well. They're kind of like Muckbusters, too. But they uh, were screening a, a, the Asylum film known as Almighty Thor. Which Speaking is, of low-key. Uh, which is a, brain, uh, a low-key rip-off of Thor. And I, 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 I was like, okay, I'm going to watch this. I'm, I just sat down and watched it. And I was like, okay. I'm watching the beginning of it, and I'm like... Okay, it's... Okay. Okay. What? What? Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Who's Loki? Who Who's playing Loki? Freaking... Richo... Wait. Richard Grieco. From 21 Jump Street. Mm. I was like... What? Ouch. I was like, what? No! And... Uh, I was like, you know what? No, no. I'm not watching it now. Screw that shit, because Richard Grieco is a great actor, and he did not deserve to be in that movie. He wishes he was Johnny Depp. Yeah. Uh, uh man, it's... Fucked. He wants to prove himself that he at least he can at least be better than the one in uh, Son of the Mask. <laughs> <laughs> Act- <laughs> I'm trying to think is what I've what I've seen him. Yeah, he he was very he I I will say he was evil. He was very menacing as Loki. He he was destroying shit. He was like, "Where's Odin? 
where's Odin? <laughs> but yeah, don't 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 watch All My Thor. Don't. That's just a horrible asylum film. And ah, uh, uh, I'm gonna take a break from talking okay. about it and let somebody else talk. Um, I'm going to be moving on to my field in animation because as much as there is um, rip-offs of popular blockbuster films, there is at least a lot of uh, rip-off of animated films that, like, the budget is, like, ridiculously lower. There's, like, a staff, like, a crew of 12 people working on it, mm -hmm. and it's just, like, it's all around terrible. Like, even, like, there's a controversy recently, like, when the movie Brave was released, mm -hmm. there was Brave apparently a studio or... that was, like, uh, yeah, not Brave, or, like, being Brave or something like that, is, like, just, twelve, like, a mile away from the Pixar studios that they were making the ripoff of it. And, like, they were selling it, like, at Yara's the exact Brave. same time the original film was released. But... Um, animation does actually have uh, their version of an asylum where there is one animation studio is so infamous to make what's possibly known as like the worst animated films ever created. And I am referring to Video Brin Cuido. <laughs> like li literally they would make things like like when pick, they would often rip off um, like animated films that were done by um, Disney, DreamWorks, and Pixar. When uh, Disney when Disney would release The Princess and the Frog, uh, they released The Frog Princess, which you think, oh, they're just adapting uh, the original book. No, not really. Um, the Princess is actually black. Oh, and uh, get this. It's not set in New Orleans. In uh, The Frog Princess, it's set in Africa. Because, you know, they're black. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, no. But and I they think... sound like white people. I only, I, I only watched oh it for like five minutes. Uh-huh. And that's, that's another thing that I want to mention. This is actually... Um, What's it's actually I find it actually really, really sad is that the voice actors, they're actually pretty familiar. They're actually the cast and crew. They're actually the cast, not, not the crew. They're from Four Kids Entertainment. Mm. The, they, actually brought, oh. they actually they actually brought in people like Dan Green, Wayne Grayson, uh, let, many people and you can recognize their voice like um the guy like the announcer from pokemon like you can hear him like like you can hear him narrating during like the opening of something like ratatouille and like you can hear their voice it's like when i heard dan green doing the voice of one of the rats in ratatouille it it hurts me you're freaking <laughs> yugi moto now suddenly you're doing this retarded rat and freaking rat that toying. <laughs> like, why, Dan? Why are you doing this to me? Well, if you look, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, the uh, the careers of, of voice actors uh, on the IMDb, you you'll notice something. A lot of them really don't have very many standards. But that's because. Th that's true. But uh, that's because they can't afford to be like ho mainstream, A-list budget Hollywood actors. They don't get paid like that. Mm -hmm. So and I can imagine. Uh, I, I can imagine this like it's four kids, so they have to. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, um, in terms of how they are themselves, like the Video Brinquito films, it's either one of two things. They can either be so stupid it is hilarious and one example of that is little princess school this is ripping off uh, the disney princesses and i thought it was one of the 
funniest things I have ever seen because everything looks so bad from the animation <laughs> to how obvious they're ripping off the Disney princesses to um, the storyline, pretty much everything about it. And then there are the so bad, the, the so bad and so stupid, it's no longer funny. It's just amazingly bad. And one of them is rat tattooing because mm. they are they're stupid to the point where it's freaking unbelievable. I mean, seriously, like the choices they do and everything is like it's so wow. Like normally, how can there's not nothing, not a creature in this universe can freaking function like that they're literally freaking walking and talking vegetables they cannot think <laughs> like but seriously they do, <laughs> but they do have the company seems to have one incredible superpower and uh, i will take the i will take the the time to mention that here um I I can't uh, I can't uh, right off the bat find a source for this, but I do know that I've read it before. Uh, we we know that uh, uh, we know that they've ripped off Pixar movies specifically because okay you you said that well it gets more interesting. Uh, Around the time Cars was out, they had a movie called Little Cars. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about doing Cars 2, but apparently with the new upcoming planes, they do have they do have a, a tie-in for that coming what? out. And yes. They're they're doing a planes knockoff because they presume that that's going to be a hit. And, are, you know, are, you sure like it's, are you sure it's Video Brinquito? I'm I'm pretty sure. Uh, if it's not them, uh, uh, I I guess they're presuming that it's going to be a a big hit in the same way that uh, the Asylum was mm -hmm. presuming that After Earth was going to be a hit. So they made another A E movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but um, it gets now. Here's where it gets creepy. It's like they're they're predicting this stuff. One of the one of the uh, suggested directions that this uh, that this uh, uh, Pixar created license could go in the future is in the direction of uh, boats. Guess what oh, really? video Brinquito has planned? Already. And Boulder. I have seen yeah. the photos. What? What is it? Uh, wh however Trumps. you say... However you say boats in Portuguese. Bote? I don't know. La botas. Or something. It's motorboats. I don't know. <laughs> but I Brings have a whole seen new the image. Right. Huh? Uh, I was just thinking it was like La Botas. And I was like, brings a whole new meaning to that's a pretty big bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, do you have an image? Do, do you know where to find an image of it? No, I, I don't. It was a. Uh, it. It was on a, a catalog. Oh, God, I think I found it. <laughs> oh, God, I think I found it. Okay, so the video, there's a video Brinquito catalog. Uh, I'm going to link you guys to it. I'm on their website. I think I found it. I think I found it. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. Oh, PDF. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, and then it might take a while to load Oh, dear. Yeah, this is going to take oh, a little on. while. Yeah, hold on. Ooh. You can just fast forward. Catalogo. 
I have the like, catalog. This will be in the outtakes. <clears throat> you know, and you know the scariest thing. Uh, I just want to add this while we're looking at the catalog. With the little, uh, the thing about the little cars is that it's actually their most successful franchise. Yeah. They actually, have, I think, four to five sequels. Yeah. But they're like ten minutes long. <laughs> the funniest thing about it. They have a live show. What? There's a little cart. You could check it online. A, the little cars live show. Wow. <sighs> it is. Oh my god! It's literally as dumb as you think it is. Okay, here we are. Uh, uh, once it loads. Skip to page four in the catalog. Okay, glass. Page four. Skip to page four. So, Judoku? Oh, no, I know. Maestro. Maestro Ojo? What is that? Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. What is that? Gosh. Video Briquito still lives? I thought they were dead. It no. can't be. Norma dos avios in <laughs> Oh my god, the boats! Oh my <laughs> Jesus! Oh my god. It can't be, no. The boats are coming next. Yes. It can't be, no. They're, no, they have, they're, no. no. They have to be, they must be dead. They can't be still be alive. They can't be making crap like freaking the, the airplanes thing and the boats. Oh, Jesus. We're not safe. We're not safe. Oh, crap, go back up. Let's see. We're okay, so, safe. oh. And look what I found now. Turn to page, turn to page 10. Turn to page 10. Hold it on. has uh, it, it's uh, in tiny thumbnail text, but you'll see it if you you can you can blow it up a little bit. Oh my God, I see it! I know what you, I see it. Uh, oh my God. Barquinos. Oh, that is creepy. That's creepier than cars. <laughs> I swear to God. God. That is creepier than the cars. The cars are okay. I'm like, and little cars are okay. Car. But look, look at the... There's seven, there's eight, there's nine little cars. How many freaking little cars is there? <sighs> and the boats Like you said, it's their most successful. Yeah, most successful franchise. Oh, those damn Brazilians. And you know uh, the scary thing? Go on. I just want to add this. Actually, another, like, really scary thing is um, uh, th there's a, they made a ripoff of um, Kung Fu Panda, which is uh, the little panda fighter. fighter. Yeah. And if you go on their website, there's a mascot. They made a giant freaking mascot of the little panda fighter. Oh, boy. How did I miss that? <laughs> oh, boy. How did I... Uh, looking at the other ripoffs, and now they scare me. <laughs> oh, man. Robozinhos. I, I saw the hardcore kids review that. Oh, God. Gladiformers. Yeah, the rip off of Transformers, obviously. <clears throat> yeah. So thanks, Michael Bay, for bringing Transformers alive. <laughs> I slurred my words. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was that was my word. What is this? Oh, okay. What the heck? So, so I. Mulan, Zoro, Pocahontas, Tarzan. Gulliver, what the fridge? This can't yeah. be all them. 
<sighs> I don't know what you're looking at. He's still looking at the catalog. Well, but, uh, Page 11 of the catalog. Okay. I've seen it. I've seen enough, so. Yeah, I've seen enough, too. Um, I was going to say, there's... Beside the... Before the Asylum, there was many, many mockbusters. For example, in the past, you know, E.T. came out. Steven Spielberg's most acclaimed film. And it spawned Mac and Me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, see, here's, here's a, a very curious question. When two movies come out that are suspiciously, suspiciously similar, but uh, they're both by major studios, i.e. Uh, Mirror Mirror and Snow White and the Huntsman, ah. which one's mm. the mockbuster? That's, that's, or that's, that's, are they considered mockbuster? That's actually a really good question, because... I did see both of those films, and uh, it's the funniest thing. I would I, say it feels more like the the mockbuster. Uh, it's like yeah, it's more of a comedy. And again, if you see Snow White and the Huntsman, you you know it's like some dumb blockbuster, yep, mindless yep, uh, entertainment. Yeah, you're thing. right. I was just gonna say that because Snow White and the Huntsman is a nitty gritty action blockbuster kind of thing, and Mirror Mirror is like this <laughs> happy ish uh child film and you think like okay sure yeah that's that's the way that snow white is supposed to go isn't it but that's the thing and since you mentioned that the uh asylum the asylum released their own known as grim snow white yeah but i i just want to add before we move on that um what you mentioned james when two hollywood films two big studios would release uh, uh like this really popular uh like two movies that seem suspiciously similar this is not a new story when it comes to animation it happens all the godforsaken time um there it's the case with madagascar and the wild the emperor's new groove and the road to el dorado despicable me megamind the list goes on like, there's a lot of these. Mm-hmm. Ah. Understandable. Uh, what was I going with this? Oh, uh, the Brothers Grimm's uh, Snow White. Yeah. I mean, you're right about most of the silent films having include the author's name, like Grimm or H.G. Wells. And another one that came up is uh, Sir Arthur Cohen's Sherlock Holmes. And that one is a fucking doozy. Oh my god. I've seen the... Is uh, it smart as Sherlock? Yeah, it's a mockbuster of the 2009's Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes. And I've seen Lupa in Cinema Snob Review, that movie, and my god. It is... I don't know how to describe it. I mean, there's a, there's a freaking steampunk mechanical flying dragon in the damn film. I thought what? it was a dinosaur. Was it? A, oh, yeah. It was a dinosaur. I'm seeing it, it's been a while since I've seen it, so it's dinosaur, dragon, so it's the same thing to me. But it's like, really? What? It's like the untold Sherlock Holmes story. It's told by his what that I thought it was. And I was like, oh my gosh, they stepped it up. They just went beyond Sherlock Holmes. Like, oh my god. I know what I think they did. Huh. I think they, I think they probably generated that uh, uh, that that dinosaur model for a project that they were working on, in the same vein of Mega Piranha or any of their other dumb projects, and then that got scrapped. And they said, "Here, turn it into a Sherlock Holmes movie." That's yeah. that's a pretty good theory. Wow. That makes sense. Like they have like the animations of like some giant dinosaur monster thing all set up but then when that when that would be canceled and they looked at their next list oh what are we gonna do sherlock holmes okay let's try to incorporate that and let's uh let's just change the texture into uh a like a machine pretty much 
Yeah. We'll tell them it's a machine. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> um, I could t- um, see forty nine minutes. I mean, I'm trying to think. Like the asylum, I've seen quite a bit. I think I was renting asylum films from Netflix, and I uh, I was telling James about this a long time ago, and there's I was watching a western film they made called Six Guns and it's actually a mockbuster of Jonah Hex. Um, I barely see the resemblance. There is no re- resemblance at all. It's just a rip off western film pretty much. It they have, there's no Jonah Hex kind of paranormal kind of feel to it. It's just a generic um western which I thought it was okay. That's a, a I would say if you want to watch a, a silent film, go watch Six Guns. Wait, I'll tell you which ones I recommend. I re- recommend Six Guns, Abraham Lincoln vs. Zombies. That's actually a, not a, a bad one. But Six Guns. Yay. Six Guns. And there's, there's an interesting kind of casting slash director choice here, and you might know the, the family. What about me? <laughs> Is the shark good? <laughs> what? Is Mega Shark good? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, Mega Shark's good. Hell yeah! Are you kidding? Yes. Me? Are you Mega kidding? Mega Shark. Shark is amazing, especially Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus when that Mega Shark just jumps in the fucking air and just fights that, just gobbles up that airplane. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> amazing. That sounds beautiful. Um, six guns. <laughs> <laughs> six guns has an interesting family relation here. Um. Six Guns is directed by Shane Van Dyke. Does that last name sound like a bell to you? No, you can't. He can't be related to. Yeah, um, let me. It Six Guns also starred Barry Van Dyke. So let me let me explain. Shane is the son of Barry Van Dyke. So, in, in, all right, how am I supposed to, so Shane is the grandson of Dick Van Dyke. Mm Mm-hmm. And, Uh, and Barry Van Dyke is, I think, his, his, yeah, Barry Van Dyke is Dick Van Dyke's son. So you get the Van Dyke issue with that, but honestly, I think it's just interesting where it's like, what Van Dyke? Whoa! <laughs> Overall, Six Guns is actually a, a really good Western film, in my opinion. It's, there's nothing bad about it. There's it's just the generic j- Western where, you know, uh, a, a little Western family, uh, fought the Husband slash father gets killed, the wife gets raped, and they, she wants revenge, blah, blah, blah. A typical Western kind of thing. You know, that actually reminds me of, um, I didn't see it, like, the whole movie, but I saw the, I think, Film Brain's review of, um, of Transmorphers. Apparently, it's not a ripoff of Transformers at all. What it is, is that he explained that it's, actually more of a ripoff of Terminator where every well, it's, actually, it's more of a ripoff of like Terminator Salvation because it's pretty much everybody against these machines that rule the world you know where uh, I'm going with this I, I think I know where you're going with it and, I, and I'm not sure if that's correct in my opinion I mean the I don't know. I don't know. I I've not seen the film. I don't even know how to compare it. But the Asylum did make a Terminator mockbuster too. Because when Term- Terminator Salvation came out, they made the Terminators. No, but I'm pretty sure that's the plot of Transmorphers. As these people, they fight off against these machines. It's more of a ripoff of Terminator. Like even though yes, they have made a ripoff of Terminator Salvation itself. That's actually the plot of Transmorphers. I don't know. I'm kind of reading. I don't know. 
everybody can make their own opinions. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. Don't you judge me? I'm not judging you. I I I will believe you. Um, speaking of the asylum, of course, as always, because asylum has a lot of films that I could just pick my brain at. They made a Titanic too. How can you make a sequel to Titanic? Yeah, and of course, it's directed by Shane Van Dyke. <laughs> oh, by the way, just out of curiosity, um, are there any talking mice in there? Any rapping dogs? Any giant octopus? I don't think so. Um, but mm. but here's the thing, Titanic 2, which is a no mock bust, it's an original movie, and it's, it's, a, it's a not a sequel to the James Cameron film. It's just called Titanic 2. I don't know why. I guess they're trying to... Titanic 2, the iceberg's revenge. (laughs) It just... It just... It pretty much the plot is... This time, they really didn't see it coming. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 wait, wait, no. No. Here's the the ship. Here's the tagline. Here's, Here's the tagline from the poster. 100 years later... Lightning strikes twice. What? <laughs> it's on the poster. If you, uh, so, if you're, if you're, right? So 100 years later, so they probably... Uh, there's a new similar-looking cruise, also known as SS Titanic 2. So there's another one. And, and the same issues happen again. Oh, a tsunami, not a freaking iceberg. It was a tsunami. A lightning hits twice. Jeez. Um, okay. I, uh, By the way, th- this just popped up in my head. I remember researching like the Asylum films, and there's one that I think the title sounds actually pretty funny. because I Because I can only think of two movies mixed into one with this title. 2012, Ice Age. Oh, oh, oh! I I think I know what you're talking about. Hold on. I think I don't know. I feel like Maybe obviously they're, they're ripping off the Roland Emmerich 2012 movie, but like with those two titles, you can only think of like the Ice Age characters trying to survive 2012. You know? Yeah, and I found the movie. I don't know if it's... Really? It's called... Oh. Okay. There's one called 2012 Supernova. Yeah. Um, there, are, there are two yeah, other... Yeah, it's like a series, apparently. Well, like they, a series of movies. Yeah, there's 2012 Doomsday and 2012 Ice Age. Gotcha. Okay. So I did find it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, that, you can think about that. Yeah, the Ice Age character is surviving 2012. <laughs> Oh man, that's a good thought. You know, I, I just realized maybe we shouldn't say this out loud, just in case if like, Blue Sky is actually listening, and that might be the plot of like their next three <laughs> sequels of Ice Age. <laughs> there's no stop to freaking Blue Sky with their Ice Age sequels. Sure, like they're gonna listen to our podcast, just like we mentioned about <laughs> other movie ideas. You know, Toy Story yeah. 4, you know, the sex toys. Hey, there's, there's Woody and there's freaking... Sex Toy Story. Exactly. <laughs> so, they're not going to... No, we'll be... Say that either. Now Video Requito might listen. <laughs> uh. Oh, my God. Um, wait, I wanted to talk about a couple briefly a couple more that I've seen and then just just really quick I don't want to waste any time um I said I mentioned that Abraham Lincoln vs. Zombies is like a good movie which is a mockbuster of Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter I've seen both the mock the mockbuster and the blockbuster I personally Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter is actually pretty interesting the action was great. The vampires were interesting. I mean, it was pretty badass. Uh, Abraham Lincoln's Zombies is kind of like the same way. 
I mean, the action's good, and the zombies are actually pretty well crafted. So, I mean, I might add a draw with those two movies. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to disagree with you there as somebody who read Abraham Lincoln, Vampire uh, Hunter. Obviously, yeah. I would believe you would have. <laughs> I, have not um, read, I have not read the book. That's from my perspective. I have not read the book. It was my mindless mind watching the movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. The book. <laughs> the book Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter was was actually interesting because it brought up certain cases that made you that made you question uh, or even uh, shall I say it made you curious about learning history. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter throws that all to the side and is a uh, absolutely ridiculous uh, blockbuster film. It, yeah. it doesn't... It, it, there's, there's very little thought put towards it. So I... Uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to disagree here. That's fine. Let's agree to disagree. Anyways, okay, what, what I was trying to say with Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, I mean, with a title like that, the executives are thinking, if you're going to have a title named Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, pretty much they're going to, they want to tap, like, people's primal instincts in what they want to watch in a movie called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, yeah. which is yeah. Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln, killing vampires like they don't have to think much like they don't have to think that much to deliver a movie like that obviously did they have so, to like, turn they... mary todd lincoln into a valley girl <laughs> oh oh totally forgot about that i totally oh, forgot about that yeah, yeah they did like they want they, they want their as soon as possible um, yeah. And yes, I, I think you're right. Uh, right on point there, Matt. Uh, the the executives didn't even read the book. They uh, uh, they they saw the title and said, "Let's go with it." Mm-hmm. Fun fact. So, but yeah. Abraham Lincoln versus zombies, I'm going to have to avoid. It's, it's funny how guess... it's funny how the executives weren't really paying attention to the making the movie of Abraham Lincoln Vampire because the screenplay is written by the author who wrote the book. You're kidding. I'm not. <laughs> so, you not... How did it suck? So, don't blame <laughs> Hollywood... <laughs> crap and, and all that stuff how can the author take his creation and not put it into script form <laughs> curious minds wants to know because uh, I just read it just a screenplay by Sh- Seth Graham Smith and I'm like he wrote the book too what the fuck <laughs> so uh, I don't know what we what wrong with that. Maybe... Um, who the fuck knows? I take nothing back. Okay. Because my knees... Because my knees ASAP. So, anyway... Last... En- uh, enough about... Uh, Abraham Lincoln. Enough about Abraham Lincoln. Enough. Uh, of, uh, I want to bring up a case. Huh? Go on. I want to bring up a case of something... Uh, that hasn't been brought up yet. We we talk about the uh, we talk about uh, two two major movie companies here for Mockbusters, uh, Video Brinquito and The Asylum, who by the way have only been made popular because of people like us. Uh, but uh, I want to bring up the case. I want to bring up the case of uh, Sharkbait. 
Why does that sound Who has heard of this film? Why why does that sound Shark familiar? Bait. Why does that sound familiar? Why does that sound familiar? I've heard that title before. Shark Bait. Ooh ha ha. <laughs> oh check the link. Check it out, man. It's all catered to you. Wait, no, this can't be. It can't be. It is. God, I know this. I know this. Sweet Jesus, this is the thing. And oh yeah, this is. This is a mockbuster. I. Oh my. That's the. the only thing I, well, well I, this is. Well. Uh, of course, of course, of freaking course. This distributed by the Weinstein Company. Of freaking course. I'm. I'm going to go ahead and brand it as a mockbuster because even though it's not coming out around the same time, uh, it it deserves it. Oh, yeah, especially with the cast, it too. Say, it did say it was harshly criticized for borrowing heavily from other films such as Disney and Pixar's Finding Nemo, DreamWorks' Shark Tale, and Walt Disney's The Little Mermaid, and at one point a reference to Star Wars and The Karate Kid. Yeah. 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 Wait. The for the for the vast majority of this film, I which I actually have seen, the big crime that it commits is is strongly resembling uh Finding Nemo, but plot wise, yes, very much resembling Karate Kid. Oh good god okay and they, guy. Can can you yeah? do me something? Look at the cast. Yeah, Going I know. to UK cast. I know, I saw the cast. Freddie Prince Jr., Rob Schneider, uh, let's see, Andy Dick, Fran Dr- Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many. Charlie Ermey. John Rice Davies! Yeah. What they don't tell you here is that Rob Schneider actually voiced about half of the cast. The really? other half you see here. Well, probably. Well, not really, but, you know, he has, he's like the narrator, he's hes a ton of other voices than this uh, sea turtle yeah. character that he plays. Oh my god. Wait, Freddie Prince Jr., what did he do? What did Freddie Prince Jr. do again? I'm sorry, I'm a little lost. Uh, Freddie like, and Scooby-Doo movie. Oh, okay, that, oh, that Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah. Oh. Yes. And his career stooped this low by this point. Yeah. There's no more Scooby Doo um, films for him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and it gets better. This one actually had a sequel. Yeah. The Reef what? 2. The Reef 2. High Tide. And it's like, it's not it's even this... related to the fucking. Title it's like should it be called Shark Bait Two? What the hell? Well, the uh, this movie is this movie is actually renamed The Reef for uh, um, American Apparently, audiences. Yeah. In the UK, Australia, and North America, they renamed it The Reef. Ah. There's, they made a sequel. Why? Did how? Did they? How successful was it? It's successful enough to top their $10 million budget. But, uh... uh, But, yeah. (laughs) I'm stumped. I'm, like, literally, like, freaking... We made Matt speechless. I'm... I'm gonna stump you even more now. Oh boy! Are you, re- yeah, are you ready for more stumpage? <laughs> but okay, take a look at what I found in the local red box. Damn, it's great escape. Open. There we go. Uh, <laughs> what? A sequel <laughs> to the animated film A Turtle's Tale: Sammy's Adventure. S- what the yes. hell? I think what that, is this? I've, I've seen that poster for Turtle Tales before. Tales before. 
echo. Yeah, the uh, the case here is that you know yeah, I, I took a roll in this. Huh? They got Pat Carroll in this. Where do I know them? You know Pat Carroll? No. No? She's Ursula. You should uh, check out the uh, first film that that this film is based off. Look at the cast of that one. Oh, that is juicy. Melt me with this. Tim Curry. Yep. Tim Curry. I'm just a sweet transvestite from underneath the sea. God, the UK version, they got John Hurt. Yep, the John Hurt. In the UK, they got John freaking Hurt. Yep. How is that possible? Uh, Paycheck. Oh, my... Wow! 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 Dominic Cooper? Oh wow, Dominic Cooper? Mm-hmm. Wait, Dominic he's not Cooper, popular enough yet. Uh, he was the uh, he was a young uh, lead guy in uh, Mamma Mia. Oh, he's in Cat. Um, nah. Yeah. yeah. I don't you know. You probably I recognize him if you saw him. I don't know. Uh, uh, oddly enough, that Dominic Cooper was not Abraham Lincoln, so Vampire Hunter. From yes. hell, I'll be there. The History Boys, The Judges, Mamma Mia, The Escapist. Uh, no, I don't really know him. Captain America? Okay. Maybe Captain America. I don't know. No, I don't know that guy. Oh, my God. It's just so okay. Crazy. So... Yeah, Any would more this be this? considered a mockbuster? Is my question to you guys, or just a ripoff? Um, what is it ripping off? Essentially, that's the thing. I think it's more just a case of a. With this one, I think it's more of just a case of a directed DVD. Uh, you know, no. I think it's just a DVD thing. You know, I, I don't think. It's not like the Reef where they are trying to rip off stuff like Finding Nemo and Shark Tale. Uh, this one is just like, it was released in 2011. So it's too it's too late to be ripping off the those underwater films. So I say it's not really a ripoff of the, it's not really a ripoff of anything. It's not a mockbuster. I think it's just a direct to DVD animated Hmm. That's my take. Okay. I um. Yeah. Look, okay then. I'm. I wanted to. You completely. <clears throat> um. I've completely freaked your mind. You blew my mind. But- I'm still stumped about how John Hurt can do this. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, I I I, I don't know. What, what, what would it be the pitch like? A, hey, John Hurt, I got a movie for ya. <laughs> you play oh, a- I'm going to movie starring sea turtles. It sounded good when they told me about it. I might as well take my paycheck and do a bit of voices, and then I'll be on my way. Well, thank you for doing that. Kind and of then fun. I will go on to reprise. I will go on to play the next Doctor for one episode. Haha. <laughs> Just for one episode, so that the fans can go crazy, oh. and then that's pretty much it. Was John Hurd played the Doctor at one point? Um, uh, he would. Let me do this de- delicately. Um, spoilers. At the end of the season finale of In the Name of the Doctor, at the end, he, he plays, they call the Doctor, but he's referred to as this character that was before the Doctor. Like, he kind of is in the Doctor's past, but we don't know what or why. He was a Doctor at one point. 
is what you're saying. Apparently. Apparently. One, uh, of, one of the doctors, but it's not with the the 11 doctors. It's just a unnumbered doctor. He wasn't the first, he wasn't okay, the second. Well, He's like like somewhere I up. am the missing link of the doctors. So we'll find out that I in the uh, anniversary of Doctor Who. Hurt. Let me uh, let me kind of close this together with one last film, like last time. Last time I mentioned something obscure and with Nicolas Cage. Now I'm going to talk about something obscure that I've seen with a mockbuster film by the Asylum that should wrap it all together and end it for good. The film of the Asylum of which I've seen, which is a mockbuster of Iron Sky, which is a Finnish, I think it's Finnish film about the Nazi uh, planning this plot against Earth. They have a moon base and shit happens in Iron Sky. The Asylum mockbuster of that movie is known as Nazi at the center of the earth. I saw that name in the list, and I was like, what? It's also retitled Bloodstorm in the UK, but it's not It's not a direct rip-off or mockbuster of Iron Sky, because, you know, Iron Sky had the uh, Nazis on the moon, this being in the center of the earth. And uh, it's actually quite creative what they did with that instead of being on the moon they're in the center of the earth you know kind of this uh quirky thing i've not seen iron sky so i don't know what they're ripping off per se but nazi at the center of the earth was quite a interesting film as they were uh long story short a group of scientists like in antarctica find this like this hole slash the center of the earth and they go in there they discover that the Nazis have been hiding there all along, plotting against Earth. And uh, the Nazis are trying to take over step by step by step. And that's right, I'm remembering the film now as I'm talking about it. It gets even better. Uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> you're going to love this. No. You're going to love this. Um, of course, the Nazis are, are they love Hitler. They have, the leader is Hitler. Well, they have Hitler in this movie. They have Hitler in this movie. That's the step off of what Iron Sky didn't have. In this movie, Hitler is in this movie, and he is a disembodied head in a jar. And they attach he, they attached his head to a robot body. They saved Hitler's brain. Oh yes. my god. They saved, they saved Hitler's head, and he's Robo Hitler. I was afraid they would do that. They went freaking wolf in the movie. <laughs> so, you know, there's good on top. Demon. But the thing is, is that sometimes you, you you'll notice that his head is like some some actor, but in some shots it's CGI. <laughs> wow. It's what a god. I mean. I mentioned that I liked it because, you know, it was a very interesting take on what Iron Sky offered. And you, if you want to see Robo Hitler, you got to go see Nazi the center of the Earth. But see, it was, yeah, uh. they, so they plot against Earth. They, uh, they have these, like, these spaceships they were building. So they kind of rise out of the center of the Earth and try to attack cities. There was this big fight against Robo Hitler. <laughs> oh, uh. my God. You know what would be funnier is if yeah. this is more of a ripoff of Journey to the Center of the Earth. Yeah, just was, add Nazis to it. Exactly, and that's what I was kind of thinking of. Like, yeah, it's kind of a mix between the the ripoff they're ripping off and then Journey to the Center of the Earth kind of thing. Or I was I watched it. I was like, oh, Journey One okay. and Two, so they can just add a scene where the Rock would have, like, his very deflecting nipples. <laughs> and that's what kills Robo-Hitler. It's the rock's very deflecting. <laughs> and i leave you off with that. Okay. I don't think you guys... You can, don't got any more? I don't think you guys could top that, so... No. No? 
Not even me. No. This has been Cinema Royale. And, of course, it comes to the very important decision of what the ep- next episode is via the dartport, dartboard, not dartport, dartboard of topics. Being chilled out here. Ooh. Ah, shoot. Off by a hair. Okay, let's try one more. Yep. I got it. And, Matt, you're going to love this. What? The next topic for the 11th episode is movies based off TV shows. Oh. Wait. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh, I am freaking ready. <laughs> I am freaking ready. Just, so yeah, if you're listening to this, um, then make sure you like, comment, just comment, like, tell us what your opinion on Mockbusters are. What is your favorite of the silent film? What's your least favorite? Just give me a spiel. Um, make sure you subscribe. Do you, you like it many at all? Do you like the asylum? Do you like what we talked about? Um, Do you enjoy Video Brinquito? Did you survive through them? <laughs> good, good questions for two. Do answer. you have an address I can send a bomb to? No. Um, also make sure to subscribe to this channel where you can listen to this podcast and much more. And, uh, just so you guys are prepared for the next episode, you can watch Animat's, uh, top ten list of movies. Top ten worst films based on a cartoon exclusively on Blip because copyright on YouTube sucks. Yes, it does. Whatever. I swear, are you, are you, are you aiming the, that dartboard on purpose? No, I'm not. I, I I just throw at it. I mean. Okay. You're not that. You're not that good. I'm. No, I just. I just. I don't even look. I just go. I don't even look at it. Ah. All right. Well. Uh. Till then. Goodbye. See you later, dudes. Now, y'all.